now unfolding. The time of your great blessing. Thank you, Derry and Dennis. Come on. Nothing but victory. That's the promise of our King. To do exceedingly. Abundantly. Above what you ask for thee. Put it in the house. Expect no Enter into God's presence. Give 
Let's do it. 
judgment, but because of love. Draw with your love. Draw. Be merciful as you draw, because you are our God. Sin you cannot partake of, but you can deliver and forgive. Draw. I for those that's grieving. Draw.
anybody in here that the enemy has some of your stuff and you are making the declaration today you are making the proclamation today that I'm taking back everything that the enemy took from me come on if that's you in the building won't you put your hands together and just give God praise that he'll give you the authority he'll give you the ability he'll give you the power to take back from the thing come on with the thing the fuck
So I want you to know when I fight for mine, I'm fighting for yours. When I fast for mine, I fast for yours. Because I consider you first before I consider myself. And I want you to know that I believe in this year that some things that were taken from us, we're getting them back. I'm not writing it off. I'm not saying, oh well. I'm not saying it is what it is. But there are just some things he just can't have. And I'm not going to let him keep it, you hear me? I'm not going to let him keep it. I got to go get it, my boy. You hear me? I got to go get it. So that means I might have to make some changes in my lifestyle. Come on, somebody. Because I've declared war on the devil. And don't take it lightly. The devil has some power, but he doesn't have all power. So that means when you come up against him, make sure you got yourself together. And make sure you got on the full arm. Oh, come on, somebody, because he's cunning and he's slick. But he's not more he's not more wise than God. And God will give you a strategy to come against him so that you are able to obtain and lay hold to that stuff which was yours. We greet you in the name of the Lord. We, even those that are watching by way in the virtual sanctuary and all of you all that are sitting here this morning. You look so good sitting here, and I just thank God for the very presence of the Lord um, that is in this place even right now. As we have offered up to him our praise and our worship, I know that he has inhabited his praise uh, because we came in here with no other agenda uh, than to bless and to honor uh, and to worship and praise our God. So he's present in this place even now. And so uh, we thank God for all of you all, all of you visitors that are maybe the first time you visited, those of you that may be watching for the first time or watch later for the first time. We pray that you would have a divine encounter with God and that you would have an experience um, that would change your life. Uh, just not today, but it would change your life forever. Because as you always hear me say, you can't come in contact with a living God uh, and stay the same. Everybody that came in contact with the living God, their lives have been changed. Let me tell you, arms grew out because they came in contact with the living God. Limbs were, covered, were recovered. Lame people walked. Blind people were able to see. Deaf people were able to hear. Come on, somebody. Uh, the children were fed. All because they came in contact with the living God. The dead man had to get up because they came in contact with the living God. You hear me? So we thank God for the presence of our God who is living. Because he has risen from the dead as he said that he would. So we thank God for each of you all. We're going to move to the word. Well, we're going to take up the offering. Then we'll move to the word and at the conclusion. I will give you the announcements because we want to give ample time to the word of the Lord. Because that's the most important part of us coming. Is to hear uh, from the word. Hear from God and hear what he has to say. But at this time we ask that you would get your tithe and your offering together. As we sow back to God, as we give back to him what he's given to us. Um, and as you always hear me say, there is nothing. There is nothing that we can give God uh, for the things that he gives to us. There's nothing. You can't buy what we get from God. Every morning, we get up. And listen, I didn't get up late. He woke me right on time. You hear me? He gave me the activities of my limbs. There are so many things that God has done that we can't pay for. And he doesn't even ask us to pay for it, but he says, basically, just honor me. Just obey my word. And in that being obedient, God turns around and he blesses us. Amen. And so we want to uh, give you these options to give. Uh, if you're watching by way of social media and you're not in the building, you can give us a call at 319-232-3428. There's someone in the office that will take your call. Um, or you can stop by here at 1651 Sycamore Street, right here in the city of Waterloo. Uh, someone will come curbside and receive it from you. Well, there's a lockbox out there. You can drop it in there as well. Or you can send it um, by the traditional U.S. mail to P.O. Box 362, Waterloo, Iowa 50704. Uh, but if you're sitting in this building and uh, you want to give, uh, there was someone standing in the lobby. Uh, to read your card. So if you have a debit card or credit card that you need to have swiped, if you step into the lobby, there's someone there um, that will take care of that for you. Um, if you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Cash App. 
and that is dollar sign, gift of life, 1651. Again, dollar sign, gift of life, 1651. Uh, that's for those of you that are savvy with technology. Uh, and finally, those of you that are sitting here and you want to give, we ask that you would please rise to your feet. And as you are coming to your feet, make sure that people uh, don't have to climb over if you can just kindly step out of the way so that they can get out and bring their gifts to God. Even if you don't have anything to give, for there was been seasons in my life when I had nothing to give at all. But it was instructed by the man and the woman of God to come touch the reciprocal anyway, because that's the best that I had at that time. We just ask that you would follow the directions of the ushers there in the real bring your gift. Uh, we ask that if you are with Cash App, can you please make sure that you put your uh, full government name, if you will, so that we'll make sure how to properly credit that to you. And then on your checks, if you can please make sure you give your, uh, if you have a giving number, if you can put that on there. Following the directions of the ushers there from the real.
anybody know it? Come on, anybody in here know it? If you know it, just throw your hands in the air. For the gifts that are in the house. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't want to be nowhere else. Yeah. 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 As the old folk used to say, the more I call him, the better I call him. Yeah. He does something, doesn't he? His name shifts the atmosphere. <laughs> Get things up out of your bed and 
Sometimes it's just a move of God that it just steals everything. And you can't move from that place because if you do, it will cause somebody to miss. Because sometimes we are so set on our agendas. things that you attempt to do. But after you, after you start, the enemy comes in and tries to sabotage 
And so you find yourself back in the same spot you were before. Hear me, Brother Burns. You find yourself back in that same spot again. And then sometimes you get to the place of frustration. You want to throw up your hands and say, It is what it is. God said, No longer. God said, Because today I'm starting a work. I'm destroying that yoke of bondage that has healed you and keeps holding you. Seem like it causes you to let life sometimes pass by. But today, man, I'm gone. And I call you that not because you are a pastor, a preacher, or anything like that. Because down on the inside, that's what you really are. That's what God made you in the beginning. Because we were first spiritual. We were in the mind. Because it shall unfold in the days ahead. And it will be characterized by your character and your integrity and the way you live. This day forward. Now you ain't perfect. Don't look for perfection. Don't look to be flawless. But look to be mature in God and look to be better than you were yesterday. Because that means I'm moving forward. And so this day, I remove every handcuff, every shackle, every weight, and every sin that was so easy to beset you and cause you not to be able to move forward. I come against the spirit of struggle that it will no longer be in your life. That poverty will no longer be your portion. But that you will lay hold to the things, the abundance that God has for you. We speak it, we declare it, we proclaim it over your life. That you will follow after God every step of the way because he loves you that much he loves you so much that he made sure you got up today he moved everything else off the schedule so that you could be here to sit in this atmosphere so that these words could be spoken to you better days are here the best is still yet to come the latter is going to be greater than the former. Because it's not over. You don't have to accept what it is right now. Because God said, I'm going to fight for you. I'm fighting for your house. You hear me? Y'all put your hands together and give me praise. Listen. We can go back to David, and I can talk about David right now, but that is not what the Lord has done, and that's not what the Lord is doing. I'll pick it back up, and I'll finish him next week. Let me run through these announcements. Then we want to, let me do this before I even get to that. Let me extend to you this invitation right now. Because when the Lord does a thing, he does it his way. And I'm, I'm smart enough now to know that when God comes in and disrupts, he had a purpose in mind. And when he takes hold, I let him have his way. Because he knows better than I. He knows what his children stand in need of. Just while you're there in your seats, there might be somebody here today that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. We want to extend to you this invitation today to give your life to Jesus Christ. These are the parts of services that it seems like people get, the enemy gets busiest because it has to do with people making a decision that will forever impact their lives. It changed the course of not only that individual's life, 
but everything that's connected to that individual. And so today, we offer you Christ. We extend to you this invitation to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. He loves you so much that he sent you here today. So that this business could be handled. This is that day. This is the day that he has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. But this is the day that he's extended to you this invitation to come. And let him be Lord over your life. Even if you're watching by way of social media, you can call the church phone and somebody will come and lead you to the Lord. 319-232-3428. If you're sitting in this building today and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and you know that I need to make this step. I need to give my life to Christ. This is the beginning of my new life. This is the beginning of a new start. Because when you come and you give your life to him, the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. That means if I come, he wipes the slate clean. His blood washes. His blood covers. And he keeps, he'll cast your transgressions as far as the east is from the west. Those are two points that will never meet. He throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. He doesn't remember them. He doesn't bring them back out and hold them up in your face and say, this is what you did wrong. He saw no need this morning. Even right now. So if there's something, if you're here, don't be shy. Don't worry about what's if somebody's looking at you. They don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. We all had to walk that aisle at one point in our lives. And let me tell you something, I'd rather give my life to Christ when I can get up and walk and get to him than I have to lay on my deathbed. And they're telling me that I don't have long. I'd rather go ahead and live for him now so that there would be no doubt where I'm going to spend eternity. I've got to see Jesus. I've got to see Jesus. I've got to go to heaven. I've got to walk the streets of God. Listen, I want my robe. I want my mansion. I want my crown. Everything that he's promised, I want it. I've got to see Jesus. So if there's one, we extend to you this invitation right now. Secondly, if you're here and you're in a backslidden condition, what are you talking about? Reverend, I'm talking about you've been out of fellowship with God. You've been kind of doing your own thing. You've been out of sync with God. You haven't been in fellowship with church, but more so than anything else, you've been out of fellowship with the Father. That's a dangerous place to be because you have tasted of the Lord. You have experienced the blessings of God. The Bible declares to us a man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not even fit for the kingdom. And so you have to know that you can't stay in that black, back sitting state any longer. The Lord is wooing you and beseeching you to come today and be restored. Be restored unto him. We can deal with the church piece later. But if you've been out of fellowship with God, and you know today is the day that I, I need to go back to the Father. I need to get back in right standings with God. We're not here to ask you why, where you've been, what you've done. It's not our business. That doesn't matter to us. Our responsibility is to restore you in the spirit of meekness and love. And so if there's one here today that any part of that call fits you, we extend this invitation to you. I know people are seated. It makes you feel a little more uncomfortable. 
But I promise you, if you slip your head up, I'll come walk with you. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. And thirdly, if you're here today, and you're looking for a church home, we want to extend to you this invitation to be a part of the family. If you're here, and you know the Lord is leading you here, and I say that, that's, I always said it that way, the Lord got to lead you to a church. Don't play any, any matter more with church. Because there are certain, there's a certain place the Lord wants you to be. Because it's going to be uh, instrumental in your development and your growth. And that's why he'll send you to a particular church. You've got to be led by the Spirit. Because if you're not led by the Spirit, you ain't going to stay long. You can delay your progress by being somewhere that God didn't call you to be. So I say to you today, if any part of that call fits you, we have time. Even when the service is over, if you feel a little shy, like, no, I can't walk up there right now. Uh, I can't do that. That just ain't who I am. We can handle this in private. You can come straight to this altar. You can meet me in my office, and we can lead you to the Lord. Amen. Come on, one more time. Clap your hands and give them a praise for this day. Let me just share these announcements with you quickly. First of all, we want to make sure we extend to everyone that is here an invitation. There is a free meal after service today from Hearts to Hand. It's our outreach ministry. Um, and they are downstairs preparing food now. I think it's spaghetti and garlic bread green beans and something, um, and brownies or whatever. It's free to anybody. Even if you're watching, it's free to you. Uh, just to come to have a free meal and to fellowship. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. We're not asking for a donation. Uh, you can take it, you can dine here, and you can take it to go. Uh, so we want to extend that invitation to you uh, today. And then I think it is on next Sunday that we sell a chicken that is downstairs. I think they're $13. Um, and they'll be doing that. It's the same ministry, hearts to hand. Um, all what they do uh, comes out of their pocket. And they do this uh, because it just it promotes fellowship. And then also it reaches out because there's a lot of food insecurities, uh, insecurity around us. And people um, don't always say that they need um, food. They haven't had a meal or whatever. There's a lot of it that's going around uh, with the cost of food these days. Uh, it's hard. Uh, people have to choose between medications and making sure the rent is paid and making sure the lights are on. Um, and so then when it comes to food, it's a liberty. Um, and so we want to do as much as we can to help the defray. Can we do it all? No, ma'am, no, sir. Um, but there are a lot of churches in this area, New um, Impact Church of Hope, does it? I think Antioch is doing it uh, on the 24th, I believe it is. Um, and so um, there are needs. Uh, it is easy to come preach to people and tell them they need Jesus. But if they're hungry, if they're cold, uh, and if they don't have the basic necessities of life, sometimes you're just wasting your time. So sometimes you got to meet the need first. Um, and then. Uh, Give them Jesus. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, so we want to uh, extend that invitation to you to come today uh, and dine with us downstairs. And then we want to remind you of corporate prayer on Wednesday from 6.15 to 6.45. Uh, it's on the conference line. Uh, so we ask that you join us on the conference line. And then um, all those celebrating birthdays in January, we want to salute you and say happy birthday. And we pray that God uh, bless you uh, in this new year, uh, this next year of your life, um, that uh, the things that you desire, Lord, uh, that they will come to pass uh, and that you will see them. Uh, and so we thank God for all of you January folks. Um, and then also, um, 
we want to talk about with Shatora. Did you send me that, Pastor Shatora? Did you? My phone is over there. <laughs> we have one of our very own, uh, had the opportunity to, to see this little lady grow up. Just precious as she can be. I can't believe how old she is. She's almost as tall. I think she's almost as tall as me or taller than me. Um, real quiet, soft spoken. Um, and she's getting ready to be a part of the junior cotillion. Uh, and I think she goes to ninth grade next year. Is it ninth grade this year? Oh, where's the time gone? Um, and she is a part of the junior cotillion. Been a gift of life, baby, ever since she been here. I mean, before mama gave birth to her. Um, and so we want to pack out that night as many tables as we can uh, to support uh, Sister Trinity Jones. Stand up, Trinity, so they know who you are. She don't like all this attention. <laughs> right there, y'all have your hands. <laughs> So she is a part of the junior cotillion. We want to make sure that we go uh, and that we support her and that she see our face. Um, tickets are on, will be on sale. Um, you have to get the ticket, I believe, from Trinity. Um, so as soon as the tickets are available, we'll let you know. That cotillion is June 3rd. Um, and so um, more information will come forth about that, but we want to make sure um, that we go with that she see our face uh, and we support her uh, in this junior cotillion. Um, so June 3rd is the date. So um, Pastor Chateau will give us more information on where to get the tickets, uh, the cost of the tickets, the time of the event, uh, and the location. Um, and we want to make sure that we are there uh, to support her. I still can't believe she's going in ninth grade, but kids grow up. <laughs> They do go well. Um, on the 24th, Tuesday the 24th of January, that is a Tuesday, I need to meet with um, all the leadership, ministerial staff, everybody just together. So that's the leadership, ministerial staff, um, all of everybody at 6 p.m. Um, right now, I'm going to say it's in person. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on the weather. Um, Pastor Chateau is building this uh, email thing so that we can, if we have to do it via Zoom, we will. So that is the 24th of uh, January. That is the second Sunday of January. So we, I mean, second, the 24th of January, Tuesday. Um, so we ask that you would please mark the calendars so that we can get together uh, and have a conversation. Um, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. on the 24th. It's a Tuesday, the 24th of January at 6 p.m. Then we want to make sure that we remember all of our sick and shut in, especially Mother Lily Hart. Uh, we want to remember her. Um, she's under the weather and she needs our prayers. She's already, you know, she had to bury her husband and now she all has her own health issues and now she has something added on top of that. And so I ask you all to please pray for her. Mother Lily, um, she's probably not really up to doing a lot of talking, but um, you know she would tell me and they can call me and you know, she, she talks. But just pray for her. Um, she Send needs our card. prayer. <laughs> Send her card. He Send her card. Yeah. Send, she yeah. doesn't do Facebook very well, so if you send her one on Facebook and somebody will show it to her, she gonna see it. Okay. Right. So we want to send her card. Let her know that we love her because uh, trust me, her desire is to be here with yes. us. She wants to be in church on Sunday, but she's had so many things going on. And so if she's watching, we wanted to know that we love her. Um, the rain is going by. Um, we love them so very much. Um, thank God that the other three mothers are sitting here this morning. Um, so we, we want to remember all of our sick and our shut in. And then also we want to remember all the bereaved families, Dr. Gloria Kirkland Holmes, uh, Alicia Jones, Helen Meeks. Sid Simpson and Gwendolyn Thompson. Um, so we want to remember all of those and all of those sick and shut in. Um, we don't want them to think that we have forgotten about them. And then Pastor Judea is your journal that she was talking about, the journaling, um, jotting down your prayer request and the things that you are asking 
of the Lord. Um, you can see her after service. And there's a bookmark that goes with it. She has the journals for you. Uh, that is for the month of January, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then at the close of January, she's going to collect them and be praying over them yeah. as well. Um, and so um, she wants to, us to use it as a point of reference yeah. to see what the Lord has done. Yeah. But sometimes I think we forget the things that we ask of God. Um, and then when it comes to pass, um, I think sometimes we forget to praise him for it because we forgot we asked him for it. Um, and so if you can see her after service, she has these for you. Um, and uh, we just believe, God, that everything that we ask of him, um, that's a part of him, that's in his will. And not for selfish gain or for evil reasons. So please see her uh, at the conclusion of service, and she will have those items for you. Again, the 24th of so January at 6 p.m., it's a Tuesday, all leaders, ministerial staff, everybody together, if we can meet together. And we, next Sunday, I'll let you know for sure if it'll be here at the church or it'll be virtually. It just depends on the weather. So I want, if somebody could have Julie come up, she has these. Items I think that that are rough. Uh, Brother Mike, if you could have Julie come, uh, that she's coming uh, again. We thank God for each of you guys uh, and what the Lord has done in this place, and for the yokes and the things that have been destroyed. Next week, we will finish up talking about David, this young lad who got anointed. For purpose and for reason. Uh, and we want to share some points with you uh, as this year is the year that you've got to have the anointing. You've got to be anointed to get these things accomplished, to get certain things accomplished. You're going to have to be anointed to do it. If you're not, it's almost going to be fruitless and pointless. We have to have the anointing that empowers us. It helps us uh, to be effective uh, in what it is that we do. And I want you to understand being anointed does, doesn't have to do with being pre about, about preaching either. I want you to know you have to be anointed to be mad to certain people. Let me tell you, she had to be anointed to be mad to me because I'm not an easy, easy, I'm not an easy issue. I'm not an easy, I'm not an easy. I'm going to tell you, you better stop cutting it somebody else's mate. You better be anointed to be married to them. Everybody couldn't be married to me. I'm going to tell you, I got issues. You got to be anointed to be a mother and a father to certain kids. My mother had to be anointed to be my mother because I had issues. You hear me? So we know that God anoints us for purpose. Yeah, we're trying to cover everybody else's stuff. We're trying to cover other people's positions because you got to be anointed to handle that. I admire Bishop Jake. Y'all heard me say this before, but I don't want what he got. He has the anointing for that. I got the anointing for this. If I try to step into that that I wasn't anointed to do, it'll destroy me. hating on folk. Look at somebody and say, don't hate on me. Because this anointing came because he crushed me. You hear me? The anointing comes from crushing. You hear me? Crushing. How they get that, how they get this oil right here? They had to crush it. It represents the anointing. Let me tell you, the anointing isn't something that I can just pour on you. Let me tell you something. The anointing comes when you have gone through some places and gone through some things. It's when sometimes the Lord let the enemy put his foot on you. <laughs> because he'll know when to tell the devil, get your foot off of him. You don't think he'll let the enemy come at you? Yes, he will. Take an interview with Job and ask him. <laughs> the anointing is a costly thing. And I said, I wasn't going to preach. Let's go on and move around now. Because I feel that the anointing in the building. So don't be a hater because somebody else is anointed. 
They got to be anointed to run that business. Everybody couldn't run that business. Everybody couldn't run Tri City. They're anointed to run that job. They're anointed to run that. Mm. So don't be ahead of Don't be ahead of your life. Don't be ahead of your life. Celebrate somebody else's anointing. Just look at somebody, clap your hands in their direction and celebrate the anointing that's on their life. I ain't hating on the brother, uh, uh, brother Jerome over there. I would have loved to put it on them, but I ain't hating on it. That ain't my anointing. Nobody's if nobody would have got their yoke broken this morning had I been sitting on the organ. Nothing would have happened. Everybody would have been looking at all, what is he doing? That sounds a mess. But when you walk in the place God has anointed you, it becomes effective. They hit two or three keys and everybody want to go up. I can go over there and strike two or three keys and everybody's still sitting. Because God didn't anoint me to do it. So you trying to snatch somebody else down so you can get in that place. No, you don't realize they were anointed to be there. Daniel was anointed enough to go to the lion's den. I couldn't have made it in there. I've been anointed for this. Just turn around and tell the person behind you, I've been anointed for this. I've been anointed for this. You hear me? I've been anointed for this. I've been anointed for it. Uh, and I didn't get this anointing out of no Cracker Jack box. I didn't get it out of a box of Lucky Charms. I didn't get it because I went to a, some, con some conference or some seminar. I didn't get it because I read a book. I got it because I was in the trenches. I got it because I was in some tight places. I got it because I was in the garden of the city. That I had to be crushed and everybody else went to sleep on me. That's where I got it. I got it because people lied on me. I got it because people scandalized my name. I got it because my daddy rejected me. what I paid for this. I had to bury my mama, my daddy, my cousin, my friends. I had to bury them. I had to walk this thing out by myself. I had to figure it out myself. The Lord anointed me. God gave me the ability to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Gave me a healing anointing. You don't know I had to be sick myself first. I had to be sick. I had to go to diagnosis. I had to walk in places and the doctors gave up on me. I had to walk through cancer. And when I came through it, and when I came out of it, God had gave me an anointing. Because I didn't doubt it, I trusted him in it, and he let the anointing rest on me so I could go to somebody else. If God anointed you to do The anointing is costly. Y'all, it's costly. The anointing is costly. The anointing is costly. It's costly. And it costs way more than what you think. And you got to protect your anointing. Started. Come on, we get ready to listen so we can go in. So y'all can go downstairs and eat. Come on, Julie. The next Sunday we're gonna work hard. We're gonna work hard next week. So don't come as you are. Because the oil gonna be everywhere. Cause you to call to get things accomplished this year. 
hear me? He's going to give you that anointing. But you got to make sure you know your area. Because you can't take your anointing and try to operate in somebody else's field. That corn going to choke you out. You better go on back over to them soybeans. Y'all get my point? Don't try to take your anointing and walk in somebody else's lane. But it's designed for you. All right, I better go.
we go downstairs and we know that there may be some sick and shut in that couldn't make it and uh, we're going to send the plates to them. Now don't act like you're sick and shut in no lie in church. Amen. No lie in church. And uh, we're going to send it to them so that they can eat. And listen, people of God, I know that there is hard times outside. But what I have found out is we find the money to do what we want That's to do. That's right. And so we want to remember that God's house still has to do what it needs yes. to do. And every now and then you got to have a little help to do it. And so we're asking if you put that, I want you to just go ahead and put them down. But I think a carton of cigarettes is almost a hundred dollars if I am. Am I telling you God have true? If you can put one of them down, boy, you can get every picture that was on that thing and, and feed uh, 20 people downstairs. Amen? That's the way I look at it. So I'm just going to give my money. I don't need to win anything. But I'm going to give my money because the scripture said if they're hungry, feed them. And if they're naked, clothe them. And that's what the word of God says. And so it ought to be happening in God's house. And so we just want to get about into a place of giving. I don't know about you guys, but for 2023, I want us to bust the walls out of this place. In every area that we need it to be busted out. We need busted up in here new carpet. Amen. We need pews that need to be fixed and replaced. I want to bust them open. And so I believe God for this year like never before. If I ain't never believed him before, I'm sure believing him now. For every person in here, we want God to bust a move in your life. And so we're going to get ready to bless this food. Y'all stay in the seats. I know y'all tired. Amen. But I see y'all going to get a lot of energy to go down those stairs. So we're going to bless the food right here. I'm going to go in the back way. Amen. <laughs> You going the back way too? All right. You know it's a quick way now. But we're going to bless this food and we're going to give God the praise. And we just, pray. listen y'all, pray for mama and them that's down in that kitchen cooking. Because they have taken it in their heart, you guys, to feed. Hearts to head is born and they doing what they said they going to do. So we want to uh, pray for them as well. Father God, we thank you for this food that you have. Provided. Father, we know that all good and perfect gifts come from you. And God, the ability and to sit down and to eat and commune with one another is a gift from God. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you are blessed and sanctified. Remove any impurities that may be there unbeknownst to us. Father, we ask that it would be in, ag in agreement with our digestive tract. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that as we go down, God, and we celebrate one another, that you would hold back COVID, that you would touch bodies and heal now for those that may be carriers and don't even know it. We want you to hold it back, God. We want, it, we want you to destroy it from the root cause. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that when we leave this place, God, that you would be with us this week. For none of us know what tomorrow holds, but you know our future. So we ask that you would, oh God, be with us in our future, in this week. We need you to be in this week. We want you to go in and touch those that need to be touched. Heal those that need to be healed. Deliver those that need to be delivered. Lift those that need to be lifted. God, and destroy the yoke of the enemy off of those that need deliverance. God, we ask in the name of Jesus that the enemy will come in and cause someone to lose their mind this week, that they will go over the edge this week. God, we pray that your keeping power will hold us again until we come together again. This we ask in your name, Jesus. And every child of God said it is so. Listen, y'all go and be blessed. Don't do no pushing. It's plenty of food down there. Amen. Amen.